Gentlemen, Drew Schroeder here, and today with me I have Michael Sartain, a friend that I've known for about five years now, a little bit over five years. It was about this time, about five years ago, where I actually saw you get voted Social Circle Game of the Year. <laughs> I remember that. 2000, 2000, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> God, I haven't thought about that forever. Uh, so when I first moved out to Las Vegas, I... Um, I I didn't know anyone except for my best friend that I moved out here with. And I, I, I was just looking up. I didn't have any furniture. I went to McDonald's to look up on their Wi-Fi on any pickup artist group. And I stumbled across a meetup.com thing where guys were um, – it was like this long page where it was like five bucks a month. And you get to hang out at this Vegas mansion where guys are having sex with a bunch of women and, you know, learning and uh, gated community. Is that how it was marketed, that guys are having sex with a bunch of women in this mansion? <laughs> really? I, it was five years ago. Okay, so listen, let, like let me tell you my side of this. Like, <laughs> I, need, free pizza. I, I needed a place to stay, and my best friend had a mansion, so I would stay there. And then I knew a bunch of people, and so they were like, Mike, co come over here and talk about Social Circle Game. <laughs> Yeah. I did not know that that's the way they mark. I, I knew was, about the free pizza. It was it was like a I, sales page. I knew about the free. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I like, I'd never seen that sales page. That's yeah. crazy. I this, this is the first time I've ever heard and about then that. And it, it was like the game 2.0. Oh, okay. That's what yeah. it was called. Yeah. Okay, right. So um, I was I was working in Los Angeles, and my best friend had moved. Luke had moved yeah. to uh, Las Vegas, and he, they gave me a place to stay. They gave me a room, and I and I would stay there. And then every once in a while, I would talk to them about like networking, mm -hmm. and they called it social circle game, right? Yeah. So I would sit there and talk to them about it, whatever. And people, so it resonated with a lot of people. Now, some people it didn't resonate with. Some people liked the idea of just going up and approaching women uh, one by one or whatever, and then that was the only thing that they liked. But for some people, they really liked this idea. Uh, and so it resonated with me and really it's just it is uh, the seven habits of highly effective people right yeah it is uh, I've read that. right it is uh, think and grow rich it is what's the other book that they always make you read in business school um, oh I can't remember right now I've always read thinking I've, I've read think and grow rich right. so many times managing oneself uh, uh, by, by Peter to, Drucker yeah how, how to make friends? How to make friends yeah. and influence people? There we go. So seven habits of highly effective people. How to make friends and influence people? So yeah. you take that and then you're like, okay, how can I connect all these people together or whatever? And then next thing you know, it's like it's a form of pickup game. Yeah. And I didn't realize this. Like I didn't realize that some people wanted to take this from a, like a regular general self help industry and then push it into the seduction industry. And I can see how it works because if you look at people like a Hugh Hefner. A yeah. lot of what he did was he took his connections from Esquire. He used to work at, was it Esquire? Yeah, Esquire. He used to be an editor for Esquire. And then he started his own magazine. He used the connections that he had before. Then he used that level of status in 1953 to get Marilyn Monroe to pose nude mm -hmm. for his magazine. I mean, when you think about it, what a way to kick off your magazine, right? Right. And so uh, that that is a kind of like, it's kind of like what you were talking about before. There's like these different uh, uh, connections that you put together. And then that would would uh, fit into, uh, I guess, the seduction community. So, so how to make friends and influence people and the seven habits of highly effective people. When I went to business school at the University of Texas at Austin, those were the two required reading things that I had to do before my first business class. Uh -huh. And I read neither of them. <laughs> I did not give two shits about reading a book before I went into my business class because I didn't understand what one had to do with the other. As I got older, and then now, you know, I read a lot of books. I have my own book club on my website. Yep. Now, those were two of the books that I went back and read, at, you know, older in my late 30s, uh, early 40s. And now I, I, I see so much greatness in there. But, but, by the way, whenever I read new self help books, it's just those two books just, over and over again. It's what yeah. it feels like to me. It's like we're regurgitating those two books over and over again because they're just there's so much truth in there yeah but the problem is if i'm a young kid i don't want to hear about a book that was written in the 50s and 60s i don't think that it's relevant for me mm -hmm. and so i want someone to repackage it and then that's where ty lopez and grant cardone and tony robbins they come in they're repackaging just like it's very similar to the way guantama buddha 500 years ago he comes up with this uh or 1500 years ago he comes up with this way to like uh uh you know enlightenment or whatever and then uh, today, it's, uh, it's Eckhart Tolle. But if you go read Eckhart Tolle, it's the same thing, but Eckhart Tolle is now talking about it now. Yeah. And then Mark Manson, he re reads Eckhart Tolle, 
And then he's like, no, I want to make it with, with funnier with cuss words. So he writes the subtle art of not giving a fuck, right? Yeah. Which is the which, which is that's, that's, which is the same book, mm-hmm. but he's he's using the same thing. So it goes Buddha and then Eckhart Tolle, and now we're at Mark Manson. But now with Mark Manson, it's like this super digestible version of Buddhism. But he would never call it that. But it's the same principles. You know what I'm saying? So that's the thing. Those two books, and there's several other books like that, that have these like ultimate kernels of truth, and then everyone else is just making a buck off selling their version, their reinterpretation of those those truths. Yeah, I mean, it, it feels like I've read, like I've read those two books, mm-hmm. and it feels like every book after that, totally, yes. uh, that um, those books. I feel like I'm reading it again. Yeah, I'm like but, you, you totally but, like but, ripped but them off. Do yeah. you realize how many people have read? Never Eat Alone or Everybody Lies or any of these new books that have come out yeah. but they've never read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People and they've right. never read How to Make Friends and Influence People. Do you realize how many people have read these new books? Yeah. Dataclism and, and uh, what, what is it? Uh, the, the Tipping Point. They've read the new books but they haven't read the old books that these new books are kind of based off. There's so many people who have done that, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, you know, you... you you understand that these truths have been out for a long time. But if you're a young kid, you, you think you know better than these older people, right? You guys, are, you are the first ones to discover these networking ideas, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, with um, all this new information coming in mm-hmm. uh, and a lot of fake news is in the right. media right now, there's a lot of new things that are coming at you. I'm a very skeptical person. Right. I'm the person that will, if I see a meme on Facebook or on Instagram, then I'm going to go and check out if there's like Snopes right. on it. How can you being, you know, how can you shape yourself into finding the right information rather than the wrong information and just heading into the wrong direction? Right. So, so for me, it is the practicality of the information that makes it whether or not it's true or not. Okay. Right. So for me, uh, it's speed of implementation and suspension of disbelief, yeah. right? And then also you can mitigate risk whenever you do stuff like that. So for me, I trade. Let's say you gave me a new trading technique. Mm-hmm. I can go on certain applications and then I can use what's called paper trading and I can trade it on paper. Now, when you trade things on paper, that's not the same thing as trading them in real life. The money doesn't end up being the same way uh, because you're not actually doing a transaction. So you're a few pennies off, but you can still learn the techniques of like, Let's say someone teaches you some kind of technical analysis. Does it work? Now, personally, I don't believe any technical analysis works. I think all of it is basically astrology. But uh, over time, I have learned some techniques from two mentors of mine from Chicago, Tom Sosnoff and Tony Batista. They taught me a bunch of things, and then I put them into practice. Not 100 times, not 200 times, 10,000 times. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the first thousand times though that was with fake money and then after a while I started using it with real money and so that's how I learned right but the first trade was the first day I learned about it speed of implementation do you guys understand yeah and the other part was were there questions about how this might not work yes but the two guys I was looking at were multi 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 millionaires yeah so I know that there was a way that it could work so I was gonna do what they said and then question it after thousands of tries not after one or two tries this is a huge problem that a lot of people have when you try to teach someone someone something that works you just get nothing but skepticism back instead of hey why don't you try it for yourself and see that it fails instead of what they do is they run these thought experiments where they see it failing in their head instead of understanding how it could succeed okay so that that's how i do it i'll test i'll test that way uh, and the other thing, uh, the other thing for me is that I'll always believe that someone is out there who knows more than me, and that there's something that I can learn from them. Right? Mm. That belief, I go in with that belief before I even know who that person is. I know there's someone who knows more than me, and then I, when I meet them, okay, this might be the right person. There's a book out there. It's called uh, "If You Ever Meet the Buddha on the Side of the Road, You Should Kill Him." <laughs> By the way, it's a terrible book. It's not very good, but it's a really cool name <laughs> yes. uh, for a book, and it's the same kind of thing. Like I know that there's someone out there that knows more than me. I'm on a journey to lo- know more about fitness, about stock option trading, about finance, about about networking. I, I know there's someone who knows more than me, so I go into the room knowing that you might be the one. You might be the one. You might be the one. I don't know which one's the one. I'm going to listen to what all of you have to say, and then I'm going to do a little experiment with each one of your ideas, right? Forex trading. I've, I've looked at a lot of people who trade Forex. I know, for, I know that it, for the most part, 99% of people who trade Forex, they lose money. It's pretty much a scam. Same thing with, with, uh, same thing with uh, penny stocks, right? You're right. Um, I, I know that uh, 
you know, uh, cryptocurrency, I think the blockchain technology is spot on. It's spotless. It's a great idea. But I don't know that in 10 years, the top three crypt cryptocurrencies that will be around in 10 years are going to be used. They, they, no, they might not even exist today. Right. Right. Just like when, air, when airplanes were invented, the airline companies that were around there in that first decade, those airline companies don't even exist today. Mm -hmm. So if you had got in early with the airlines, you'd be bankrupt. Even though you came up, you figured out something uh, before everyone okay. else did. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. There may be something, there may be a blockchain currency. It might not even be a currency. It might be just something used in order to, to, to control inventory or something like that. I don't, I don't know. But uh, there's all these different ideas that you could do on the blockchain. It may have nothing to do with Bitcoin. So who knows? I believe in blockchain. I'm not really sure about which one of these currencies is going gonna, is gonna to go somewhere. But I know that through experience and through opening up an account with GDAX and Binance, and doing a little bit of trading on my own, you know, looking at how currencies, currency exchanges work. Uh, I, I'll, I'll admit I have not put money into penny stocks. Uh, I've had enough people tell me that it's not a good place to go. Um, and I, I look at all these different ideas in finance and then I'll test them out instead of just being wholly skeptical. And then I learn from those experiences, right? Now, what do you think about those apps that they're like, hey, you know, just it rounds up, mm -hmm. the, those roundup things where it, uh, something costs like four fifty, and then invests your fifty cents, uh, charges you five dollars. No, it doesn't. Uh, for me, I want control, yeah. and I want to be able to learn. Yeah. And those don't sound like that. Like Robinhood, I'm a little yeah. afraid of. Like you know, the Robinhood, the free yeah. trading app. Okay, yeah. So the and issue. Like acorns. Right. So the yeah. the issue with things like that. That listen with the Acorn thing and the Robinhood app, it's better than you spending money on bullshit. Right. But but the idea that you can't short stock and the idea that you can't sell options or buy options on those platforms is scary to me. Mm -hmm. It's taking an entire, we're getting way off subject here, but it's taking an entire investing uh, community that's already long at the top. Like, like, we're already too high. The market is already too high. You've seen two big crashes this week, right? A, yes. A 3% crash and like a 2.5% crash yep. in, in the same week. We're already too high. Anyone who's telling you to buy now when the market's this high. A horrible idea. Well, it's not, it's not just yeah. that it's a horrible idea. It's that they don't know what they're talking about. Like, right. you should immediately say, okay, wait. This person, oh, I'm sorry, after these two crashes, obviously everyone's changed their tune. Yeah. But, but let's go back to January of this year. The people that were telling you to buy at the top, it's not that they're malicious against you. They just don't know what they're doing. They're just, they're sheep. They're just going along with the crowd. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, that, so that's a huge problem. These people don't really understand. They don't have enough experience to understand when things are at all-time highs, the probability is actually that it's going to go down, not up. They, but no one wants to believe that. So when, when, when Bitcoin was at 20,000, I heard people saying, I will bet anything in the world that it'll go to a million. And now Bitcoin's trading under seven, yeah. right? Maybe under six today. I don't know. I'd have to go check. But Last uh, I checked, it was like 67. Right, exactly. Yeah. Now, it may go back up to 20 or whatever, but people have to understand the reason it was at $20,000 a coin was not because of the fundamental value of Bitcoin. It was because people were getting, people were being convinced and arm twisted to buy in at the top. People had this fear of missing out and people were being advertised to on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to buy into a cryptocurrency that was already overvalued. Mm -hmm. There is nothing right now, I'm not saying in the future, but there's nothing right now that, it, that cryptocurrency is doing from a practical manner to, to validate a $300 billion market valuation, a $500 billion market valuation. Mm -hmm. It is... To, val to, to validate a $10 million market valuation, a $20 million market valuation, possibly, but not $300 billion. People think that when I say that I'm a hater of cryptocurrency, absolutely not. Just I'm a buyer of anything if it's low enough, and I'm a seller of anything if it's high enough. That's what a real trader is. So for me right now, the, the overall stock market and the cryptocurrency market, even with Bitcoin down at 76 or whatever, I still think they're too expensive for what they are producing. Our nation's GDP has not increased enough to have the market go up as fast as it was going. And now we see a correction, and that's what you should expect if you're an experienced trader and you look at all the different indicators. Anyway, I know this is not what you wanted to talk about. Yeah. But more specifically, back to more what, what you're talking about. So like it, what, in your field, like in the seduction community, you have people that, that become, they, they are taking in all this information, and then they get to a certain level of expertise, and then they become coaches, instructors, right? Right. And what happens at that point is that the money is now more important than the learning. Right. Right. So, so like, let's say you are a, a, someone who teaches a, a pickup course, right? And a guy comes to you who's a student, and he actually knows a thing that is better than the thing that you're being that you're doing. There's a part of your brain that's like, wait, no, 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 no. 
I'm the instructor. In this thing that you're teaching me, I'm not allowed to learn because I'm an instructor now, and so the learning has stopped. Right. And this is one of the most dangerous places that you can get into in any field, is that where you think that you graduated to a certain level, and then the learning has stopped. I had a former business partner who would do these things on Twitter and didn't understand that, that Twitter was evolving and so you had to do something else. Then Instagram comes out and he's trying to do the exact same things on Instagram that he was doing on Twitter. Instead of learning what the new things to do are, the new way to communicate on the new platform, he's doing the old thing that gave him some monicum of success back in 2010, 2011. He's right. trying to push that into 2014, 2015. And it, especially with social media, the evolution is so fast that you can't be an instructor and stop learning. The learning can never stop. And, and with people who are really, really, I, I, again, Ty Lopez, I got full disclosure, he's one of my good friends. Ty Lopez, with him, I personally believe the learning and the money are equal to him. The learning never stops with Ty. And so that's the reason why Ty can continually bring you social media mastery, uh, academy and and uh, the, his Bitcoin Academy or whatever. Where by the way, if you watch it, he's skeptical in there, right? If you listen to Ty's Bitcoin podcast, he's very skeptical about these valuations, just like I am, because Ty is always about learning. The learning never stops. And I, I, f I find that funny that people nowadays they're still reading the game and the mystery method, and there's just like yeah, I'm, I'm so, good so, such a, such yeah. a great example. I know guys right now who I've seen that teach uh, pickup, yeah. right? Uh, and again, well, full disclosure, I've never taught pickup. Like I've never right. been a pickup instructor. I lived with a bunch of guys who were into pickup and then I would talk about networking and they would call it, they, re, they repackaged it social circle game, right? Right. Um, so so uh, they would read this book that came out in you know the early 2000s, the game, and then they would use the techniques that they saw in the game. And then as time evolved, remember when the game was written, there was barely a, a MySpace, there was no Facebook. Then there's an Instagram. The world changes. There was no Uber. The world is different now. And they're still using these old techniques because these old techniques gave them a little success in 2004. And so the learning has stopped for them. And they're in a very dangerous place where they're an instructor, but they can't learn any, any new techniques. Mm -hmm. And as they get older, the plasticity of their brain, their ability to learn new things slows down. That you, people, people think it's really crazy that I'm a 40 year old man and I play video games. I play video games because I have to learn a new skill in each one of these games. I gotta learn super fast and I gotta keep up with kids that are half my age and we're playing super <laughs> you gotta fast. stay relevant. I, I have to stay because like, and it's not just video games. It's with You're the right. trading, it's with my website design, all this different kind of stuff. It's videography. It's something that I've always had to keep up with the new, new, the new updates and the way videos are produced. And drones obviously I'm a big drone flyer w with those kind of things I always want the plasticity the learning the uh, think of uh, neuroplasticity is like a learning muscle right if you don't use the learning muscle the learning muscle atrophies learning in and of itself is a muscle it is a skill set the ability to learn is a skill set just like the ability to do math do you understand right if you are constantly intaking information learning it and figuring out how, how to retain it then you will, will be better in the future at retaining more information. As obvious as that sounds, some people don't understand that. I go through, last year I went through 62 audiobooks. Okay? I went through them at triple speed. Ask me questions about any of them. I can recite to you about the, the keys to every single one of those books because my brain has gotten so good at being able to retain information from books. And how did I do that? I did that from listening to books. You do the thing to get better at the thing, right? Again, that requires hard work. A lot of people in the self-help industry or who buy a self-help product, they don't wanna hear about hard work. They wanna just hear that I flip this switch and say this word, I put these keywords on my website to do this SEO, and I'm a millionaire right. while I sleep. That's what they wanna hear. And the, the really sad and unfortunate thing is that the people who sell this pie in the sky type of info product, or pie in the sky type of a self-help product, these people are the ones making the most money and the people who are like, hey, like, let me tell you how to uh, trade stock options. We're gonna start here, we're gonna learn what a standard deviation is. We're gonna learn what the Black-Scholes model is. We're gonna learn how options are priced. <sighs> the audience is already asleep. Yeah. Well, you, you mean I gotta do hard work? I gotta learn shit? No, the learning has stopped. I want you to tell me two or three techniques and then I wanna make a million dollars. And so if you and I were to go on there and we were just, I, I used to joke with Luke about this. What if we just offered nonsense on some, we, 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 we bought a bunch of Facebook ads and Instagram ads just offering utter nonsense. Do you, 
do you want to make $3 million a day and just have sex with all the women you want? <laughs> just follow this technique and you'll just like just utter and complete just garbage nonsense and see how much money we'd make. And we were joking about it. And I bet you we'd make a ton of money because people want they, they want the instant they success. Want to, they want to believe yeah. that the instant success exists there more than they want to believe in reality. Mm-hmm. And that's so, so key. If you can tug at someone's hopes, they will ignore reality for the hopes that you're tugging on. That's some f- very useful information. As soon as I get out of here, I'm going to you know, suspend my disbelief and right. just apply everything that exactly. you just told me, of course. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I like to um, – that. I, I love to do is just like applying it, as many new things as possible, especially with like, you know, cause you guys, you said it, you gotta like keep up, you know, if, if you don't grow, then you die. Right. Well, I'm a 40 yeah. year old man. Of do you know how yeah. hard it is? Like I, I have these guys telling me about like, <laughs> yeah. you know, I've, I've, I've posted a few Facebook ads, but like Facebook targeting ads or the way people are using Instagram to grow their accounts or like which hashtags they work, hashtags on YouTube, YouTube SEO, website SEO. Do you know how hard it is to keep up with all of this stuff? If you're 18 years old, you don't realize that your brain is plastic. You can learn new things very quickly, a new language or a martial art or how to play basketball. When you get older, it gets harder. But like I said, because I want to stay up with it, I force myself to go in. Man, there's all to- all kinds of times. Like we were talking about before, Ninja, right? I'm, I'm watching this kid who's not yeah. even 21 years old make $500,000 a month playing video games. You know how many years I've been playing video games? <laughs> Bro, do you understand? And then and like I watch what he's doing and then I go play Fortnite and I'm like, Bro, I can't do that at all. He's just jump shot, shotgun, headshots. Like, I'm like, whoa, bro, I can't do this. But I'm trying. I'm like trying to keep up. And it's intimidating for me as a 40 year old man when I look and I see how young and quick these kids are that they're able to evolve with new stuff. But my, what I bring to the table is experience, right? Mm-hmm. I lived through the 87 crash, I lived through the crash in uh, uh, the dot com bubble, I lived through the 01 crash, the 03 crash, and I lived and I traded through the 08 crash. So for me, if you were trading from 09 from to 2017 and you're like someone in your 20s or early 30s, you've never seen a crash. You think the market goes up forever. Not only that, you saw Bitcoin just go up forever and you think that the market can never go down. In fact, when the market goes down, you want to complain to your congressman about what, what's, what's wrong, I'm being robbed or whatever. But I, because I've had enough experience, I know the market can go down. I have a large start, uh, stock option portfolio right now, and my overall deltas are negative, meaning I'm waiting for the market to crash. Do you know how few people know not only that you can make a stock portfolio delta uh, negative, they don't have any idea how to, right? Now, most people, if you were to ask them, do, like Drew, honestly, do you know how to short stock? Would you have any idea how to short a stock? No, Isn't that cra- I, I'm more in like ETFs. But it's but it's it's not it's it's not your fault or whatever. Right. But like the idea of like if you thought a stock was going to go up, how would you take advantage of it? If a, if I knew a stock was going to go up, uh-huh. well, how would you take advantage of that? Um, if I knew it was going to go up, if you had a really strong feeling that a stock was going to go up and you wanted to take <laughs> advantage of it, what would you do? Uh, I would put some money in, but not all. Right, so you'd buy the stock. That's it, the answer right. I was looking for. You know how to do that, right? You've right. seen it. You know yeah. you go to a brokerage and you buy the stock or you call up your money manager or whatever, okay? If you knew a stock was gonna go down or you felt strongly that a stock was gonna go down because no one knows anything, but if you knew, if you knew a stock was gonna go down, how would you ha- how would you how would you take advantage of that? Depends. Okay. So if uh, if I know it's gonna go back up down, after no, no, it goes, no, no. yeah. It's if, just gonna go down. The, you just, just found go- you just found out the CEO was found with child porn. It's done. It's gonna go bankrupt. It's gonna go down. How, how would you take cool. advantage of it? I don't even know what to do in that okay. situation. Okay, so this is not your fault. Right. Do you realize the irony? If the stock market is supposed to be all of us coming together and inputting our, like the price of a, of a stock is based on people who believe it's gonna go up, and it's also the opinion of people who believe it's gonna go down. But people who believe it's gonna go down, they can't express their opinion because they don't know how. Mm-hmm. They don't know because no one taught them you can short a stock. Guess I'm a good example of that. Right, <laughs> you can short a stock. Did you know you can borrow stock from your broker sell it and then pay it back to your broker at a lower price if it goes down. Huh. You could borrow a stock at $100 a share. Let's say you have 100 shares at $100 a share. So you have $10,000 worth of stock. The stock goes from $100 a share, you borrow it at 100 and then you sell and then it goes down to zero. So you replace the stock back at zero. You get to keep the, the $10,000 because it went down to zero minus the interest that for borrowing the stock. People don't know you can do that. People have no idea that you can short sell. 99% of people don't know that they can short sell. That's how Bill Ackman got rich. 
like because he was a short seller like that's how a lot of these things happen uh, and and it's it, it's it's not just that you don't know about it. It's scary to me because now that means that if only people can express an up opinion and no one can express a down opinion, then the old overall market should be what higher than it's supposed to be. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Because no one can express the down opinion. No one can say that stock sucks, man. I would love to be able to short it. They don't know how to short it. They have no idea how to short it. If people could short stocks that they didn't believe in, then we'd have probably a more fair fair valuation. We don't. Uh, the market was at all time highs in 2017, and now we're starting to see some volatility in the market because we gotten too complacent. And the market just kept going up and up and up, and people don't know how to express a, a negative opinion. When you sell stock options, you can even do more things. You can buy a put. You could you could buy a call. You could sell a call. You could sell a put. There's all these different ways you can that are so simple, as simple as ordering a pizza. But your finance professor never taught you about it. And Citibank and Bank of America and Chase Bank and TD Ameritrade, they don't ever want you to find out about it. Because if you learn to trade for yourself, then what do you need them for? Do you understand? Mm -hmm. It is a conspiracy where people try to teach you that you are too dumb to manage your own money. You wanna talk about a real conspiracy? Forget 9-11, that's the real conspiracy. Trillions of dollars are being extricated from, from US people, from, from the US economy, and it's happening because these banks are all in collusion to tell you that you're too stupid to know what you do to know what to do with your own money. So you, let's all pool your money together and we'll manage your money. We're we're people. We live in the Northeast and we have ties and we go to we go to our banking jobs every day. We're old fat men and we're we're smart enough to manage your money because you're too stupid to manage your own money. Right. And I don't believe that. And it offends me that that's the message that's out there. So I'm trying to do my best, because I work with Tastyworks, I'm trying to do my best to educate people that that's not the way that you have to live your life. When I first moved to Vegas, right, I noticed that you were hanging around with nines and tens, okay? Not even nines, just just straight up tens, okay? Just straight up tens, okay? The I see you hosting all of these like model, like uh, tropical, <laughs> the, the tropical beauty, okay? <laughs> Right? Your explanation of this is so perfect. Keep going. Right. So, and I see you back when I was working in the industry in Las Vegas, right? And I couldn't even get into some nightclubs. And uh -huh. I see you right out front and you're like, okay, hey, come follow me in. I'm like, what, me? Okay, cool. You know? And I see you, uh, I, I know that you had some in mm -hmm. when you worked a little bit in the industry. Uh-huh. I worked completely in the industry, and I worked from within. Right. And, okay. Uh, for the people, like, I don't have, well, I mean, like, I have experience, but uh -huh. what would you say the best way, if you are starting off in a new city, uh -huh. and you don't have any in to get into the whole nightlife industry, right. how do you build a social circle where you just, like, own the club okay. pretty much? So I've answered this question a million times. It's a good okay. question. Yes. And this is the part where a lot of people hear this, but they don't do this. Okay. okay. So this is where we're going to talk about suspension of belief and and, yes. uh, and speed of implementation. Yes. Okay. Every one of those tens, as you call them, you call them tens, I didn't call them tens. <laughs> every one of them, I can tell you tons of stuff about every one of them. Right. I love women. I meet guys who like to have sex with women, but hate women. I don't hate women. I love women. Okay. I know who every one of those girls that you were talking about, I know who their best friends like are. Personally. Yeah. I know them personally. The 75% of my friends are women. Okay. Yeah. I come at this from a very different angle. I want to be someone that is trusted by a lot of women who come here and they're surrounded by untrustworthy guys. And I don't take advantage of that trust. And I do this enough to the point where I know so many, but not just women. People notice the women because the right. women have seven or eight million Instagram followers. <laughs> but it's also high status males that I that I hang out with, and I want to know something about it. I almost feel like I'm running for mayor, if that makes any sense. I go to nightclubs for 20 minutes sometimes, shake a bunch of people's hands and go home. I almost yeah. feel like I'm running for mayor. I want to know your name. I want to know some things about you. Like I know that uh, Chloe Ture is a great example. Phenomenal, phenomenally beautiful. A Canadian model. She's been in Maxim. She's been in Playboy. Uh, Chloe finds the challenge of autism, the, the charity of autism, to be very close to her. I know that in the future, if I want to do a charity about autism, Chloe is going to be the first person that I'm going to call. Mm -hmm. Do you understand how that's different than trying to take advantage of somebody yeah. or trying to use someone for sex? Mm -hmm. I know that's important to her, and it's also important to me. 
So how can I, so I would, I would inculcate it like that. I know that to, for certain girls, like, like for instance, Lindsay Palos, animal rescue is something very important to animal to, to Lindsay Palos. I also know who Lindsay Palos is friends with. I know that she's, she's, uh, she's friends with several girls, including CJ Sparks. I know she's friends with, uh, with, uh, um, Emily Sears. I know that these girls are, are friends with each other. By, by doing that, I'm like, hey, can we all get together and do something to help the homeless? Can we all get together and do something to help animal rescue? Do you understand? Right. Because I understand what it is that they deem to be important. Do, does that make sense? Right. Instead, of it, there is no manipulation involved, right? I genuinely have my, uh, I read uh, The Beta Male Revolution by, I believe Alan Curry is his name, I can't remember. And I agree with a lot of the stuff that's in that book, but there's some parts where he's like, I true alpha males do not like being around women at all okay that's what he believes right but for me the the issue is and by the way there's another book called uh the rational male by rollo tomasi and i like the book the rational male by rollo tomasi but the problem is rollo tomasi doesn't get invited to the playboy mansion and he doesn't get invited to maxim parties because rollo tomasi doesn't have a bunch of female friends he warns against having female friends I'm going to tell you guys that the secret to if you want to if you want to talk about the secret to everything in my life regarding females it's yeah. that I have female friends whom I genuinely do care about. I know who their best friends are, I know when their birthdays are, th those kind of things, and I treat them like teammates. Like I am the I'm the quarterback and they're the wide receiver, or I'm the left tackle and they're the tight end. Like I treat them like we are teammates. You understand? Yeah, now, what happens is such a massive level of abundance comes from that lifestyle that the idea that, oh, Michael, how do you close in a social circle situation? You don't have to. Right. Like, the, it just works out for you. Like, it, it's never, whenever I hear someone ask me, how do you close in a social circle situation? I know they don't have a social circle. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know exactly. Well, what as you're soon saying. as I hear that question, I'm like, why don't you tell me when you walk into a club with 20 girls? helping one of the girls celebrate a birthday party. When you do that a few times, then come back to me with the question. But you won't come back to me with the question. Because <laughs> you, you already have, know. You won't have that question yeah. anymore. Mm -hmm. So that that's the main thing that I would say with that. Now, let's take that whole idea. Because I've, I've done that a couple of times mm -hmm. where you just go into the venue just to shake hands and say what's yes. up. You know, they give you drink tickets and you're yes. like, I don't even I don't even plan on drinking, but thank you. Yes. And then you leave within 20 or 30 minutes. Yeah. There are two there are two very pro I won't say their names, but there are two very prominent Canadian models and two very prominent Australian models that I know right now that are trying to get visas to be permanently in the United States. OK, and I know some immigration attorneys and I was a former U.S. military officer, so I can write letters of reference to the uh, at the INS. And so I'll help them with these, like guide them in these directions. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I want them, that I want success for them. It's not, I'm not trying to sleep with them. I genuinely want them to have some level of success. So I'm going to offer value in any way I can to help them have success. Okay. Yeah. That, that's, to me, that is always the key. And I'm also a connector, right? I like this. There's one girl, she's Australian. She got her uh, EB1 visa. And then I know another girl is Australian. I'll connect the two of them together and then they'll talk and they'll, be, they'll figure out, okay, well, this will work for you. This will work. I'm the guy who connects the guy who drinks too much with the DUI lawyer, right? The guy with the leaky <laughs> roof to the roofer, right? I'm the, yeah. I, I want to be a connector. Like that book, The Tipping Point uh, by Malcolm Gladwell, he talks about connectors, right? The number one piece of value that I can offer to people, anyone in anyone, any situation, is that I am a connector of people. I know I have a buddy of mine who's pretty popular and he wanted to make an info product, and I have a friend of mine, my best friend, who's really good at making info products. Right. And I put and I connected the, the two of those people together, right? So uh, let's just do that over and over again. And then on the, on the, at the same time, if you take a genuine care, but by the way, the problem is, man, so many people who are borderline psychopaths end up in the pickup industry that when I give this piece of advice, it's not that they don't want to take this piece of advice. They can't. They can't care about another human being. They can't. I can make myself care about another human being. There's some human beings I genuinely just do care about for whatever reason. And then there's some people I'm like, I need, I can see that this person's having a hard time. I need to make myself care. There's a guy that I used to work with who I found out recently has a pretty bad drug problem. And this guy had done so many things to try to ruin my life, so many things. But I know he has a drug problem and I genuinely feel bad for the situation that he's in right now because I know he's broke 
and he's doing drugs all the time out in the open in front of people and he's ruining his own life right whereas there's a part of me that has no empathy that that should be like man forget that guy he tried to screw your life up but then there's another part of me like he knows not what he does right and so that genuine level of empathy that will work for you some of you have no empathy some people out there have no empathy and for those people hey listen you need to become a stock scalper or you need to do marketing like uh like cold traffic marketing or affiliate mark something like that maybe that's what your your deal is but for people who do have empathy and you can genuinely care for other people i'll tell you that networking and and showing you remember somebody's name bro do you know how many times people will come up to me and just expect that i don't remember their name of course i I'll, and i'll be like yeah bro of course i remember your name you do this this and this you know how special that makes somebody feel if you can remember a couple of things from from, from their life and you have social media now you know how easy it is to pull up information on anybody of course what yeah. city they live in or the pro how about this how about the proper way to spell someone's name do you know how many times people will misspell someone's name when it's on facebook spelled correctly because they set up the facebook you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, there's just all these little things that you can do to become a connector, right? So again, those two main things, have lots of female friends, become a connector. Those will solve all the problems. Because if I if I tell you guys, go host a bikini competition, how many of you guys are going to be able to host a bikini competition? That's not really practical information. Some of you it might be, right? How, for, for those of you, I'm like, well, go to the, the Paradise Challenge in Jamaica and then do all the drone work for them. Uh, for most of you, that's not going to be a possibility, okay? But if I say become a connector, become a connector, right? I promise you there's somebody who's watching this video right now who lives in Wichita or Des Moines or, or, or Waco, Texas or someplace like that. And in each one of those cities, there's an SBCA chapter, right? Uh, the people, uh, people trying to help get animals spayed and neutered, people trying to help animals from being killed, right? right. Rescuing animals, okay? And I promise you that chapter is most likely being run by someone over the age of 35 who doesn't even know what Instagram is. And you are watching this video because you know how to access YouTube and you probably do have an Instagram and there you have someone at the SBCA who needs your help and you could help them and then you could work together with them to throw an event to bring all these people together. And now you're throwing an event for the SBCA and the most high value plastic surgeon, neurosurgeon, cardiologist in Wichita, Kansas, whatever city you live in, you can approach them and be like, hey, I'm throwing an event for the SBCA. Now you are this person that they don't know, but you're throwing an event for the SBCA. Right. Now you have their attention. Now you can bring them all together. And the people at the SBCA are like, man, we didn't even know how to use hashtags, bro. <laughs> we didn't even know, we didn't know how to you IG, what is IG story? What is I, I'm so confused. Yeah. And you could help them. And you're sitting, and I know you can help them. Why? Because you're watching this now. And yeah. there's so many ways that you, just having a little bit of information can help bring value to other people, you figure out a way to do it. The other thing for me is that, and I'll tell you right now, especially if you guys want to, like, let's say, um, I know a buddy of mine, he wanted to become an intern for Elliot Hulse. And the way he did it was he learned how to copyright, he learned how to film, and he learned how to edit video, right? Uh, another guy, same thing for- Which are for, all very important skills. Ty, uh, uh, Owen, Tyler Durden, right? Yeah. Uh, RC Tyler, same thing. Guys yeah. wanted to meet Tyler and work for Tyler. Learn how to edit video, learn how to, how to film. Right. Yeah. Learn how to do lighting, learn how to do audio. You learn these skill sets. For me, I'm, I'm big on video. Uh, so I learn how to do video and then I offer my services as a videographer, more importantly, as someone who, who films interviews to anyone who wants them, as long as a charity is involved. People ask me all the time because they see me host all these charities. And I'll just say this publicly. They ask me all the time. They're like, how much will, how much will it cost for you to film this? I'm like, let me tell you something. If there's a charity involved, not only will I do this for free, I'll get you all these video guys to show up and do it for free if there's a charity involved. And that's always been my rule. I, I do have a, fee, a standard fee I charge for filming and, and, and hosting stuff. But if there's a charity involved, I don't charge anyone. That's the way that I have found to offer value to lots of people. Hmm. Okay, yeah. I mean, like, uh, I remember you telling me when we were out on the strip one time that, like, you have to be a connector. And you were telling me that you were meeting people all around the world and stuff like that. And it's just like... Well, think about yeah. this. Okay, so yeah, yeah. we're going we're gonna to use arbitrary numbers. And I hate okay. to do this, but we're going to use... Uh, you remember Euclid's equation? If A equals B and B equals C, then A must equal C. 
Okay. I, I was in so spec class. That's fine. So there's a there's a there's a uh, Euclidean geometry. One of the fundamentals of Euclidean geometry is okay. if a equals b and b equals c, then a must equal c. Right. right. Okay. So that so, yeah. so this is Makes the same sense. thing. So I meet somebody. Uh, the, the other day I met a a, a a girl. She was the sister-in-law of Hugh Hefner. Okay. Okay. And she's a she's a big model. And then uh, across from me on the other side at a different table. Uh, she wanted a job in Las Vegas. Across from me on the other side of the table is one of the marketing directors for, for um, Hakkasan Group. I introduced the two of them. The, the person, this Playboy model, she has a certain level of status, and I'm introducing her to the, one of the directors for Hakkasan Group, which is one of the largest nightlife groups in the world. He has a certain level of status. Yeah, okay? it is the largest, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Mm -hmm. So now we, let's just say we have a person here who has a status of a 10, and we have a, a girl here who has a status of a 10, and I was the one to introduce them. Yeah. I am the third point in the triangle. What is my status now? 11. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah. but to them it might be. Yeah. Do you understand how I did, I didn't do anything, but I introduced two people of high status to each yeah. other, and because of Euclidean geometry, yeah. then my status must also be high. Be 10. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. So that, that is the fundamental uh, idea of how uh, being a connector works. Okay, yeah, yeah, that totally makes sense. We're good? Yeah, the battery's just like... No, then we'll switch down. it out. Just sit up. we'll switch it out. Okay, now, well, I'm... Okay, not that though. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, you talked a lot about, I, I love the whole social circle game stuff that you were just, well, as I call social circle game, yeah. what I'm going to... You know, you know what, you know, Luke about, and yeah. I just call it life. Life, yeah, right? well, life but, but, game. But sometimes, yeah. sometimes, so here's the, here's the, here's yeah. the delineation, right? Yeah. So Luke comes from the pickup community. Right. It, it's funny because I've said this publicly before. I believe <clears> that... Most of pickup, if we started in like say 2003 to now, yeah. if you were to take all the instructors and what they've done positive and negative for men, I do believe it's a little bit negative. I, okay. I, yeah, I was talking to him the other night about uh, you know pickup artist game. I'm like, yeah, uh, Owen likes to post all this other stuff. He's like, yeah, that's how he, that's what he calls game. Right. And he's like, I like to think of game as just hanging out with like high Correct. status people and stuff. And I'm like, well, I think of it as just like going out and socializing. I guess. Correct. Like, well, you. Think of it like that, yeah. but you understand most people don't think of it like that. Right. I believe game overall, and I'm not talking just about like individual. I'm not talking about individual struggle, but if we're going to take a yeah. one pickup umbrella, I think it's done a net negative for men. I, right. I do. Now it's a, it's made some men aware of improving themselves. That's right. good, but most of the instructors are doing things that I don't agree with. And so that's right. just as in my personal opinion. Not everyone can live my life, but I don't agree. Again, I'm gonna say this publicly. Most. Pickup in general, I believe, has been a net negative for men. Mm. Okay, so so when we talk about social circles, this is the way pickup is taught to most people. This is the circle. This involves all of pickup. Okay, okay. and then there's a little sliver right here, and this is called uh, social circle game. The rest of the sliver is the rest of the circle is cold approach with this little bubble of of uh, social circle. Okay, I'm telling you that it's the opposite. This is all of game, and it's all yeah. of just social interactions and networking, and almost all of this is social circle. And there's this little technique, this little skill set where you can walk up to strangers, and it's called cold approach. Yeah. But it's be but this little one percent is being taught like it is the ninety nine percent, and it's not. That's the issue. When you learn to uh, Luke likes to say collect people. I don't like that term. I think it's a little offensive. <laughs> collect people. But when you when you get people's information, you're connecting yeah. them. You are you are growing geometrically. Your circle is growing geometrically. When you go approach approach approach, you are growing arithmetically. Okay, this is the difference. When I go do cold approach, I'm growing and one and one and one and one. Right. When I do social circle, I am growing two. Who is introducing me to two? That is now four. Who is introducing me to four? That is now eight. Okay. When I do social circle, I am growing geometrically. When I do cold approach, I am growing arithmetically. That right. is the dip. That is the difference. Okay, for me. So the idea is that, that that a lot of people who do cold approach think is that cold approach takes less time and is simpler. It is quite the opposite. Yeah, social circle social circle takes less time and is simpler mm -hmm. but it requires you to give of yourself and to be empathetic to other people that is what's difficult yeah. if you are not an empathetic person and I ask you to be empathetic that it's, it's it's literally like saying someone with no arm to raise their hand okay mm -hmm. you can you do not have the capacity right people yeah. don't understand like psychopaths people who are uh, 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 incapable like of empathy. actual psychopaths. Actual, actual psychopaths by yeah. the way 
the name has such a negative connotation. Yeah. I believe 10% of the people in Las Vegas are psychopaths. 4% of the of U.S. population on, on average are psychopaths. I believe around 10% of the people in Vegas. But here's yeah, the thing. I heard somewhere that 2% of CEOs are actually, like, it's slightly above the two percent of yeah. C two percent of C people who yeah. became CEOs this year are psychopaths. Yeah. <laughs> 2%? Yeah. Minimum 35% of yeah. CEOs are psychopaths. Of course. Yeah. They're like, but, they're here's like a, but here's the like thing. Successful you can be a psychopath and be yeah. Ted Bundy, but Ted Bundy makes all the other psychopaths look terrible, right? Yeah, right. The word psychopath is, has such, is such a pejorative. The re, in reality, there are people who become psychopaths, and what happens is they do spinal surgery and their heart rate never rises. And they become the best spinal surgeon in the world because they're a psychopath. Mm -hmm. They do cardiac, the cardio, uh, the, they're cardiologists. Yeah. They do heart surgery. Their heart rate never increases because there is no emotional tie. They're basically p playing a game of doctor. They're, there's not a real person on the t operating table. So there's no nervousness and they become the best cardiologist or plastic surgeon in the world. They understand the law. They go argue the law in front of a judge. They just stick to the law, no emotion involved. They become the best lawyer in the world and yeah. they are psychopaths. That's a lot, that's one of the things people don't understand. There, I have absolutely heard interviews from generals saying they specifically look for people to enter the, the sniper program, their sniper program, people who are psychopaths. They specifically look for the psychopath archetype to become snipers. Someone who can look at a target, a distant target at 800 or 1200 meters away as just a block a target not a human being there there but and you ask yourself like why the fuck would psychopathy even be something that evolution would allow right well the reason why is because during the plasticine epic your tribe was here my tribe was a mile away and there had to be one person in your tribe who was willing to sneak over to my tribe in the middle of the night murder all the men and not have nightmares about it there had to be. Mm -hmm. For an evolutionary reason, there had to be these cold-blooded killers. There had to be. Because if they didn't, then what happens is your tribe, my tribe then comes over and kills your tribe. It became a survivalist thing. Do you understand? So, not everyone's a psychopath, but I think a lot of people are not aware of how many people there are that are psychopaths. And you have to take the name. It's almost like uh, being a psychopath is like owning a gun. You can use a gun to shoot a lock to get uh, uh, somebody out of a burning barn. You can use a gun to fire it in the air to get birds to get off your property, or you can use a gun to go murder someone. There's all these different ways to use your gun. Yeah. Just like with psychopaths, there's all these different ways. I know personally of a psychopath who's a convicted felon, lives here in Clark County. He's attacked me personally, and this guy is manipulative, psychopath, narcissist, and he's violent. Okay, That's a bad example of a psychopath. I also happen to believe that there are certain political figures in this state who are habitual liars and they do anything they can in order to get the win, but they've made it all the way to political office. That's a different form of a psychopath. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm sorry to get so deep into psychopathy, but it's always <laughs> been one of my fascinations. Yeah. There's a book called uh, um, Confessions of a Psychopath. I, I forgot that it was... I, I've, I've heard of that. Yeah, so yeah, she's a law professor who wrote it. Uh, Martha Stout wrote The, Psycho uh, the Sociopath Next Door. Mm -hmm. I'm reading uh, what uh, Lessons of a Psychopath right now by, I forgot the gentleman's name. There's so many different books that, that go over it. But here's the thing. There's no cure for psychopathy. It's almost like, some, like I said, someone being born with an arm, telling them to grow an arm. When you have someone who's born with no empathy, they cannot grow empathy. They're, they're incapable of it. Let's go back to what we were talking about before with Social Circle Game. I'm asking you to be empathetic. If you have no capability for empathy, then social circle game cannot work for you. Maybe it can, and there's some way that I don't know. For instance, if you have a lot of drugs and money, maybe that way it'll work <laughs> for you. But for the most part, it cannot work for you. Uh, because your inability to empathize with other people, eventually it comes back at you. Do you understand? Do you remember the prisoner's dilemma? Have you ever seen that? It's in game theory, this idea called the prisoner's dilemma. No, it, it, I've never I'm, not, I'm not going to get into right. it too much, but you have two people across from each other. And basically, if they tell on each other, they get uh, they get a certain amount of time. If one tells on the other one, then the person who oh, told gets less time. The right? study? Yeah, it doesn't matter. I don't want to yeah, get too no, deep no, into I, it. I, I, I'm familiar Any with Any of it. you can look up the prisoner's dilemma. But, yeah, the, but, the, but, but the whole world is the prisoner's dilemma. Yeah. And, and the way you work is you start off, the most successful way to play the prisoner's dilemma is the first time you trust the other guy. And if he screws you over, then you don't trust him again. That's the best way to live your life. You give everyone the benefit of the doubt. In, in, in legal terms, 
every dog has one bite in him. Every dog is a good dog, and then he gets that one bite, then he's not a good dog anymore. So you give people the benefit of, of the doubt, and then, and then you, you network with those people, and then you learn. And when someone screws you over, you don't hate them. You just understand that their motivation was to do X, Y, and Z. And you, maybe you don't even burn the bridge, but what you do is you understand you don't leave your girlfriend alone with them. You don't leave them alone with your money. You don't let them into your house. You just kind of learn how to segregate because that is another question that I get from a lot of people. A lot of people, if you do enough networking, you're going to bump into bad people. You're going to bump into this successful businessman who beat his wife. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to bump into this guy who has a huge YouTube following and a horrible cocaine problem. You're going to bump into these people who are flawed and you just have to, you have to have an inner circle of these people that you really trust and then an outer circle of people that you like and you talk to for advice and then an outer circle of people that you might go to their birthday party, but you're not, and maybe even their funeral, but you're not going to bring them into a business. You mm -hmm. understand? Yeah. You have these different circles of trust. That, that's another thing. You have to learn how to compartmentalize when you do uh, social circle. Yeah. That's, social circle. Yeah. That's kind of how I kind of, you know, rank people is like different social circles for different situations. Yeah. Like there's some people that I would want to go out to like a comp table with. And then yeah. there's other people that I would just, you know, hang out with at a sports bar instead. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. Cool. And then, uh, I, th I think we should kind of, I mean, we're probably at like three hours right now. <laughs> no, probably. At, uh, I think we're probably at a 40 minutes, 40 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you want to? No, we're good. I think yeah, I think it's good. Anything cool. you just need at least ten minutes. Okay, yeah, for, of course. For, to trigger the YouTube YouTube algorithm. Yeah, of course. Okay, I tell you what, let's do this. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Go out on the balcony. Uh huh. And start IG live. I'm uh -huh. gonna go in my bedroom and I'm gonna start IG live and I'm okay. gonna jump on your IG let, live. Let me uh, let me wrap this up. Cool. Okay? Let's do it. So, uh, anyway, Mike, so much plethora of knowledge that you just gave to me and you know everyone that's watching this. Speed of implementation is definitely the number one thing that you should be taken out from this. And Mike, bro, let, let you're me, wait, let yeah, me yeah, let me course. ask you a question. Yeah. Do you, from what I've said here today, you learned like you, you could short stock. There are certain things that that the, in finance that you didn't know about. There's, right? there's more things that I want to look up to. That you want to look up and yeah. you want to learn about. Mm -hmm. Would you want if if somebody was willing to teach that? Would that be something that you'd want to learn about? Yeah. 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 Okay. Because I'm thinking that may be my next venture. Honestly, is is creating something where I can teach people from zero all the way to being able to trade. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm interested. And every time, every time I talk to somebody, they're like, they don't feel like the information is out there in like an easily digestible manner. And a I think that's what, what I want to build. Me, like a lot of what you told me is just completely new information. Yeah. Too, when it comes to like the whole stock. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that, that, so that I just wanted, you know, and, and, and your, your viewers also, I just want their opinion if that's something that I should do. Cause yeah, I'm thinking so about doing something like leave that. Leave some comments down below. Um, if you're interested in that. Ba a, a yeah. course on, on selling stock options and learning finance in general. Basically that's what it would be. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, uh, if you guys have any questions or if you have anyone else that, uh, you know, I want to interview or that you want me to interview, then just leave it down below. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, dude. Awesome.